gamers, it's KYF here. Welcome to the review of Muramasa, the Demon Blade for the Nintendo Wii. This is K-Wing Reviews, episode 109, the return of me! Well, rather than do more of the same Demon Blade reviews you've seen, this review will be more of my opinion than my husband's, because some of you have already watched K-Wing's Demon Blade reviews for Game Nights and Got Being the creative person that I am, it's very hard to come up with more than two scripts for the same review. Now, K-Wife has been doing reviews for over a year now, and I'm thinking she's more than up to being the host for Demon Blade. Well, it's time for us to start this review. Now, the story revolves around two characters. Kasuke is a ninja fugitive trying to uncover his past and atone for his crimes, while the second character is Momohine, a princess who has been possessed by an evil swordsman, and she must do his vile bidding. Both characters' fates are connected to the blades they wield, both for good and for evil. Murimasa the Demon Blade is a 2D side-scrolling action-adventure game with platforming, RPG elements, and a ton of hack-and-slash goodness. This game uses very impressive 2D graphics and a very stylized and beautiful look that envies a lot of next-gen games. The game also combines both kabuki drama and Japanese fairy tale into one game. The Demon Blade consists of 16 provenances and 7 total chapters. Players are able to choose 3 difficulty levels at the start of the game, and the first difficulty is for beginner players, while the second is for more advanced, requiring you to block and dodge more when fending off masses of ninjas. Players are able to select a male or female lead for this game, and their fates are kind of intertwined. Each character has their own different fighting styles and special moves, too. The main concept for this game is to go zone by zone, fighting off waves of enemies, getting and forging new blades, dispelling barriers, and beating the bosses. In order to progress through the chapters, the players must first defeat that chapter's boss. Then you're awarded a new sword that can slice through the next barrier. The platforming aspect of this game is collecting green souls, and lots of jumping on trees and such. The final aspect of this game is, of course, the RPG elements. Keep in mind, though, this is very toned down compared to Odin Sphere. Like any other RPG, players can level up, interact with the many villagers met along your journey, you can buy items from the wandering merchants, like maps, sharpening stones, health items, etc. You can also buy weapons, and of course you can continually forge new weapons. Each character can forge up to a total of 80 swords and each sword has its own special ability. There are 108 swords to collect in the game. Once you beat the game with both characters, you unlock the third difficulty setting. Demon Blade has a lot of content compared to other games on the market today. It just has something for everyone, and that's part of this game's sheer awesomeness. The gameplay is downright fantastic and allows for two ways to play. You can either use the nunchuck or the classic controller. The game is essentially just mapped to three buttons, but I'm going to explain the classic layout for you guys. The B button attacks and you have a variety of options at your fingertips during combat, which is sweet. Tapping the L button will switch your different weapons and the Y button is used for your special move in this game. And each sword has its own unique ability. The jumping is done by pressing up on the joystick or the gamepad, and gamers will also notice a series of platforming elements throughout this game that requires you to jump a lot. But don't worry gamers, there is more than enough hack and slash goodness to keep you from getting bored. When traveling the world map, occasionally you will have a fight on your hands. This keeps revisiting locales fresh and fun too. Always keep your ninja on his or her toes. Murimasa takes place during the Genruka era, during the days of the Age of the Samurai, ninjas, shoguns, and Bushido, the Code of the Warrior. The game also reflects on Japanese folklore and legends in the form of onis, demons, mythical locations, creatures, and much more. Vanillaware has gone and done a lot of research ensuring that accurate details to showcase the Japanese mythology head on. Demon Blade's visual art style is that of a Sumi painting come to life. Which, for those of you unfamiliar with that, it is a Japanese ink painting. Some of you have heard Kiwing's past thoughts on the game from his other reviews he has done, 
where he talked about how the game was hand-drawn graphics and is heavily inspired by feudal Japan and its mythology, blah blah blah. But you guys haven't heard my point of view yet. First off, this game is so beautiful. I love the art style and I have not seen this game's equal in its stunning visual motifs. There is just something so full of life and personal about hand-drawn graphics. The painstaking amount of time and effort is very apparent. The game's beautiful detail shines throughout the whole game. Every single aspect of this game, from minor stuff like the trees blowing in the foreground, the detail of the path, the crashing waves of the ocean, lightly fallen snow, and even intricate details like creases on the clothes the various characters are wearing. Everything is beautiful and so well done. The world of Demon Blade is also very extensive, so it gives you more than enough time to soak in the beauty of this game's captivating visuals. Since this game has two characters, they focus on two different styles as well. The main lead, Kisuke, goes to various locations of famous ancient Japan like Aizu, Yamada, Mino, and Edo, to name a few. Whereas the female lead, Momohine, visits many Japanese mythical creatures and fantastic places. Momohine's places were always my favorite ones. They just had so much more color and detail and life compared to Kisuke's. <laughs> I love seeing ancient Japanese fairy tales come to life much more than watching bland castles with dark and depressing colors. I concur, babe. The visuals and gameplay both got my attention and I just had a blast playing this game. 